Welcome to Larry and Gloria with Coffee and Connect from Nashville, Tennessee, and our featured guest every week, Marnie. We're so yes. glad that she can be with us. <laughs> Good morning, Marnie. Good morning. We are rejoicing because we finally got a break in our weather here, and you know what? It has been running 100 degrees for over uh, almost 40 days, oh. and so it is going to be like uh, 95 for a couple yeah. days, so it's going to be really nice to get a little rain here. Wow. I I honestly, I, I was with my husband, and uh, we had gone up north, the north country, to uh, take some kids and pick them up from camp, and can you believe it? The lows were going to get down into the 50s. Oh my. The we're 50s. It, wow. It, that is really. It, it was yeah. cool and amazing all at the same time. I'm like, oh, it, there's there's a reprieve because it had been pretty hot in, in Sisseton for quite a while. So we were excited. One thing, about, one thing about going to camp, kids don't care. It's the counselors. And those that are taking care of them that are kids don't sleep. They don't care as long as the candy stand is open. I remember mm -hmm. that. We all went to camp and our kids went to camp. And I mean, when we would load my dad in a station wagon. And so we would put everything in. I, we'd take with this little cabin that would sleep six or eight girls. And we'd have lamp. We had lamp, popcorn, popper, <laughs> you know, curtains. We'd bring rugs. I mean, we brought everything with us. And you think we was going to be there for a year. Yeah, but you guys knew how to do that. that oh, was, it was fun. Every, the, those boys got your dad going on everything. Oh, yes, yes. And think about it. In family camp, you know, that was a huge thing. And mom and dad would get us all packed up in the station wagon and bring food for four or five days. And couldn't afford to get the dorms for a family our size. And the first time we went, one of the first times, we did that we thought we could afford it. We had gotten reservations for a little, couple of dorm rooms, and something happened that they they Maybe overbooked. They overbooked, overbooked. Yeah. and so next to the campground, which is a big camp in Lake Geneva, in Alex outside of Alexandria, Minnesota, there was a farm, and they had a big barn. And so we they, they we went over and politely, I think my dad just says, "Look, please help us with all these kids." So we just set them outside the barn deal there. They you know just. A little, like a little cat frown and we just we you enjoyed it yeah we enjoyed it we yes. had fun we had fun <laughs> you know a lot of times things happen in life that kind of sometimes we'll get up and the, say if we're watching tv programs all of a sudden we find there's three tv programs with the same theme it is mm -hmm. or or even um re-watching sermons on a Sunday yes, evening or yes, early Sunday yes. morning and it'll be kind of that same theme it's like wow in the last while especially uh, we've had a lot of people that have uh, of our friends our close friends that have gone home to heaven then uh, when I had my 79th birthday didn't help anything either because I realized my next one is the 8-0 Oh, that's right. Listen, as long as you wake up, that's all that matters. That's right. That's right. And so, you know, I people talk about death, and the word, uh, one of the words they use on every other word seems like on TV today, the word hell. They, 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 there is no restriction on that word. It used to be a no-no. You're not yeah. supposed to use that word, mm -hmm. and especially with all the politicians getting going. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, so then, so we had all that going on, and and with with that, we discovered that you know hell is a very serious matter. Mm -hmm. It's not just a, a name. It's not just a. Yeah. It's something that we have to deal with. It's something that we're all going to face. Yes. Uh, it's uh, sixty seconds after man dies, he's the, there's he's going to find out seven things. Wow. The first thing that he's going to find out is when it's over, it's not over. That's heavy. And That's when it's heavy. over, it's not over. It's appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I was, you know, kind of a joke is, uh, you know, we're going to be alive after we die. We're going into extremes. It's going to be extreme bad, or it's going to be extreme good. Yeah. The Bible yeah. talks about having 
pleasures forevermore with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Or if you go to hell, it's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. I saw an illustration this morning. I was paging through something, yeah. and it showed it was heaven and hell. And so it showed heaven with the with the clouds and the beautiful, you know, just beautiful scenery. And then the picture next it showed hell with flames. Yeah, it was just there was there was no in between. And, it was heaven or hell. And so what seems to be quite a vast area, and that is what people actually believe about hell. That's true. In other words, the people that I've heard and so forth, their their statements that they have when they say, well, I'll be out of here and it'll, everything will be over. No, it may be just starting for you and goes forever and ever and ever. Yes. And so there's a difference between annihilation and separation. Death, the word death actually means separation. Mm -hmm. Annihilation is what I think a lot of people have hoped for when they want to escape this world, they're hoping for annihilation, but it's not going to be that way. Matter of fact, what's going to happen after we die, as the Bible says, appointed unto man once to die, then the judgment. Guess what? Everybody comes back. Mm -hmm. Everybody comes back. Everybody is going to stand before the judge. Two different judges the same judge, but two different judgments. There's a great white throne judgment, which is going to be strictly for the unrepentant uh, sinner that refused to make Christ Lord of his life. That will be for the sinner. And then there's the, what they call the Bema. That's for the, the Christian who stands before God and gives accountability. Did he do what he was supposed to do? Mm. But so that you have two different resurrections jesus says in john 5 28 and 29 he says there's going to be a resurrection of the damned and there's going to be a resurrection of the righteous and so there's going to be two different resurrections there's two different judgments and there's going to be two different eternities that's why we come in as what gloria and i are you and i are we're evangelists and we need to talk to people we need to bring their minds center it back on what's really going to happen yeah some people don't they just think that hell is just a word you know uh a very dear friend of ours their grandfather and they they was talking to him about trying to really witness to him and he just snapped at him and he said he said i don't care what you say about hell i don't care if i go to hell or not well sometimes if that's if you really think that theory is true next time you go home have a conversation with someone turn your oven on about turn media. your burners on. Yeah, your burners on about medium that'll be a short conversation and the, that's where the scriptures teach us that there's going to be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth and mm -hmm. the, the bible talks about is if we can if we convert someone to christ you're pulling their feet out of the very fires of hell. Yes. If we just get that. Yes. If we just understand that. What's it? Spurgeon? Or who was it? It talked about uh, never talk about, you should yeah. never preach about hell with a uh, tear, tear in your eye yeah. because you're you're referring to somebody that's lost out there. Yes. Forever. Forever. Yes. You know, that's, that's, that's so tired. Um, you wanted me to read uh, Revelation? 20 verse 11 and on okay and i saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and i saw the dead small and great stand before god and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life keyword and the dead were judged out of the things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead yeah which were in it and the death in hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death verse 15 and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire that's right and so what's happening here is that you know with 
the books that were open, this number two thing that the sinner is going to find out is that he's going to find out everything that he's ever done is waiting for him when he gets there. How do we know? The books were open. Now, I was reading about this, and I, I you know, it, even on my iPhone, I have a deal where you could check commentaries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And one, I, I was wondering, can you imagine for all the millions and billions of people that have lived with how many books there'd be if you had a library? Mm -hmm. And then someone mentioned in the commentaries, they felt that the books that were open was the conscience of every human being. God was able to open that conscience and show them right before their eyes what they had done. Wow, what a scene, what a, yeah. what a playback. Yeah, and so this is the whole deal. And so the books were open, but then there's another one. It says, there's the Lamb's Book of Life, the greatest book, the most important book. And the way I look at the Lamb's Book of Life is that is my birth certificate is written in that book. That's good. My second birth certificate. Mm -hmm. First birth certificate is in Hennepin County in Minneapolis, but the second one it was written in heaven. An angel wrote that name, my name, in the Lamb's Book of Life the night that I found the Lord as my personal Savior. And that was when? That was in 19, April of 1957. Yeah, wow. So it's been a long time, but it's been a wonderful time. Yes. Has it all been easy? No. But has God been faithful? Yes, <laughs> yes. But, you know, I was thinking about this, too, and that is uh, there's a difference between uh, religion and being a uh, being Christ-like a Christian. Having Christianity in your heart and life is different than religion. You can have religion and not be a Christian. Uh, I repeat that. That's heavy. You can you can have religion and not be a oh, Christian. Yes, yes, yes. See the yeah. the, the Hindus have three hundred million gods. How do you get around to that in a day or two? But that's religion. But religion, uh, it wasn't religion that died for you on your sins. Matter of fact, what happened was sins is breaking God's laws. That's what sin is. It separates us from God. That's why when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, they were separated. They ran and hid themselves. They were driven from the garden. They were separated from the garden. They were separated from God. Mm -hmm. And so these are the things that happen, is that separation. And that's what hell is going to be. It's going to be eternal se separation from God. From Yes. And, but, oh, but then it says, for those that love the Lord have repented of their sins and say, God, I'm sorry, I am a sinner. I believe in my heart that you're my Lord and Savior. You died for my sins. And then here comes the important deal. It's the blood. Yes. The blood. When the children of Israel were, were going to leave the next day out of Egypt, they were instructed to get a lamb and bleed that blood of that lamb into the doorpost, uh, into, the, uh, into a bucket and apply to the doorpost of their home. If that death angel at the midnight hour came through, he looked for one thing, look for blood. If he saw the blood on the doorpost and they put it both sides and then one on, it's actually in the shape of a cross. cross. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus was going to become, the Lamb of God as John introduced him, that which takes away the sins of the world. Mm -hmm. So what happens is sins have to be removed to close that gap between us and God. Mm -hmm. And there are some, like you said, that one person says, I don't care. I'm, I'm, I want to go to hell or whatever. I don't care if I go to hell or not. Yeah. Th they'll care 60 seconds less than that. And here's the thing about religion. See, religion, uh, the sinner man is going to find out 60 seconds after he's died, he's been lied to. Yes. Oh, my. Just be good. Just do good works. We Just talk give <laughs> money. Yeah. 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 We talked to some ladies uh, in northern Minnesota. They came up to us, actually, and they heard us preach, and they know that we preach it as straight as we can get it. 
and uh, was preaching. They came up to us after the service that night and they said, our pastor told us that we didn't have to do anything to go to heaven. Yeah, and they were pretty, pretty upset. Yeah. Because they had seen the altar call and they saw these people that went forward to receive yes. Christ and pray the sinner's prayer. And they said, our pastor just said, we don't have to do nothing to get to heaven. Yeah. In other words, but you got to bring, you, the Bible says, unless a man believes in his heart, he's the unbeliever will be will be damned he that believeth not is damned so you got to believe on the name of the lord jesus christ you have to believe in your heart and you have to confess with your lips yes and repent i'm and sorry repent. Yes. but it says you know in the latter part of this chapter it says that every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that jesus christ is lord wow wouldn't you want to do it while you can and why not do it and get the reward for it yes yes Yes, and that's what, that's what it's all about. And so this is what it is, is the fact that we pray and ask Christ to come into our heart. And uh, yeah, there's, there's, oh, another pastor told me, uh, South, Sioux, South Sioux City, Nebraska, years and years ago. I remember that. Remember that one? Yeah. <laughs> he says, I pastored five churches become, before I became a believer on Jesus Christ. Well, that's the difference between Christianity yeah, or religion. religion yeah. But then he went into a relationship. Yes, then he came into the relationship. And the nice thing about the relationship is that religion will tell you that you can't know. But 1 John 5, 13 will tell you that we can know that we have peace with God. We can, because the Bible says in Romans 8, 16, it says the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit on the inside that we are the children of God. Yes. So there's, you don't have to say, I think so. I hope so. I've been, a, I tried to do the best I can. You can say I'm a knower because I have passed from spiritual death unto spiritual life. Talking about life and death. If you're in the, if you were in a funeral home in the casket laying there and you got up and walked out of that place, it would be one noticeable event. Yeah. Well, what do you tell me uh, before we went on this morning, you said about if, if you if you die in the elevator? Oh, yes. If you die in the elevator, as you're dying, you want to make sure you push the up button. Yeah, because there is the up button going <laughs> up. <laughs> so, so this is that. So there's, let run through these points again. In other words, the first thing that a sinner is going to find out 60 seconds after he's died is that when it's over, it's not over. The second thing he's going to find out is that everything that he's done is waiting for him when he gets there. Mm -hmm. The third thing that he's going to find out that he's been lied to, yeah. religious lies. Oh, yes. Yes, just go to church just to get it. They yeah. told Jesus, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, or the Sadducees told him, they didn't believe in spirits, they didn't believe in angels, they didn't believe in any of that. And so they tried to set up a trap for Jesus. When he gets to heaven, whose wife is this guy going to have if he was supposed to marry his brother's wife if uh, something happened, if he died? His supposed to marry his brother's wife and he did that seven times you get to heaven who's going to be his wife jesus says ye do err not knowing the scriptures because in heaven there will neither be marriage or given in marriage now that part i never, that, that's the one that we that's the only yeah, scripture we, we want to be together forever yeah. <laughs> and to know each other yes besides who would pick up your socks and take care of you <laughs> yeah. you've got me trained <laughs> Try it. <laughs> no, you got me trained, really. But uh, the, the uh, fourth thing is, is that the sinner is going to find out that the greatest thing that he's ever had offered him in this life, he's passed out. Yes. You know, the scriptures tell us <clears throat> that payday isn't today. The Bible says that when you get to heaven, if you've so much you've given a glass of cold water in the name of Jesus, you'll you'll still receive your reward, reward for it. And so the rewards that are waiting for us in heaven, it's there'll be a crown of, of there'll be a crown for those, soul winning crown for those that have led yeah. people to the Lord. There are people with gifts and money and abilities that have given money and kept the kingdom going. There are people that are wonderful preachers and have sacrificed there's missionaries that have gone all over the world and they won't lose their reward that's right my greatest reward we get there is to 
It's if my arms are on my children. Yes. My grandchildren. Mm -hmm. My greats. Yeah. That's what the whole thing. And that is why, you know, <laughs> you know even the rich man, when he was, when he uh, died and he was, it says he lifted up his eyes being in torment mm -hmm. in hell. He never lost the what was really important. He still retained his memory that his brothers were living like he was living and we need someone to reach those brothers so those, they're not going to end up where I'm at. Yes. And that was a big deal. And he didn't lose his value because what, what kind of a check do you think he would have written that rich man because he was rich to get someone to go to his brothers if he had it and could write it but there was no way you could do it from where he was at no and so this is the whole thing is the that he's been lied to he's he's now he's got a concern because he knows that the way that he was living his brothers are living and he doesn't want them to come where he's at at the present time. No. If, the, if, if people could see the people were in hell, if they could visually see them. You know, this is interesting. We were in uh, um, Wyoming several yes. years ago. And this gal came and she gave her testimony. Yes. And she said, because uh, we're talking about heaven and hell, and she said, hell is real. And, you know, so we're just questioning, well, you know, Tell us about it, whatever. And she said, she was a college student. She said she was in a bar sitting there drinking. And she said if she was drinking, she said she got so wasted that she said she literally just passed out and fell off, off, the, stool. off the stool to the floor. But she said, but I kept going mm -hmm. down, down, down. And she said it got dark and it got black and it was darker. And she said, all of a sudden, she said, then it got hot. And she said, it, everything was so ugly and bad. And she said, she realized that she had fallen, not just off that bar stool, but she had fallen all the way down to hell. And she said that there was the heat and the screaming and the sounds of people wailing. And she said, I, she said, I cried down and says, God, please give me another chance. Give me another chance. If you just let me live, I promise I'll live for you. And she said within a few minutes or a time, I don't know what the time was, yeah. but she said just in seconds or whatever, she said she came back and woke up she, on the- she, she said a little light come. A little, yes, she a said, little, a, yes. A little light, she saw a little light coming. Yes. And that was God coming to get her. Coming to get her. She said a little light. Yeah. And she said she was brought up and there she was laid on the floor. She said, but she, from that moment, she served God. Yes. And you know what? God is that, you know, not everybody has that opportunity. You yeah. know, I was listening this morning. Uh, Perry Stone, which is, is yeah. a prophet, and, he's, yeah. and he's, he's really a great evangelist, yes. soul winner. And he was telling about, he was telling the story about, he was talking about heaven and hell. And he said that there was this lady that he talked to that was from Tennessee. And she, he says, she shared this testimony with him, but she said, I can't give you my name or the name of where I work, because she said it's very private. But she said, I was working for a medical center where they brought people in who, it'd be like hospice that were dying. And she says, so they were just there for the last moments of their life, last days of their life. She said, a family came in. She said, she was taking care of this lady. And she says, this lady was just ugly mean. She said, just mean spirit. Curse. She said, she couldn't yeah. talk with a cursing God. She's using the F word, using the G word. She said just that she said it was just awful, but she really had a burden for this lady. And so she just, so this nurse, she said the kids came to see their mom and they said, now we're leaving and we are not coming back here. We are not coming back. So we want you to figure out what's going to cost to have her cremated. I want to sign all the paperwork because we will not be coming back. Again, we will not see her. They're going to pay for the cremation. And they're going to pay for the cremation and be done, but they were not coming back for anything or her or either her or the way it sounded. And so she said, the kids left and they went home. And she said, here, uh, this lady was just getting more ugly. And but yet her, the nurse who was taking care of her, 
she had such a burden for us. So she went there and she said, I wanted to just talk to her about the Lord, but she said, I wasn't quite sure how she was going to take it. And she says, you know, do you kind of, kind of the effect of, can I share something about you, you know, about the afterlife? She says, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear nothing about it. I don't want to hear about hell. I don't want to hear about heaven. I don't believe in it. And she says, I don't want you to say anything more about it. So she says, the lady just swore at her mm-hmm. and told her to get out. So she left the room and she said, it was, she said, I think it was just, uh, I don't know if it was the next day or what it was, but she said she was in the hallway. The, the nurse was in the hallway. She heard this screaming and wailing and horrible, just, just yeah. horrible sounds. And she was like, somebody was dying. Yeah. And she said, it was so bad, the screams that were coming in the hall, that she removed the other patients that were sitting in the hall in their wheelchairs and their walkers and took them to the room. And she went down to that room and she walked in and this lady was, the lady who was swearing and saying she didn't want to hear anything about heaven or hell, she was just screaming and screaming. And she says, my feet are on fire. Yes. My feet are on fire. She says, oh, she says, my legs are on fire. My legs are on fire. She says, it's, it's coming up. The flames are up to my waist. The flames are up to my waist. She says, and then she just gave this horrible, horrible sound this horrible wail and then she just passed away yeah. and so to this nurse said you know how sad that this lady didn't believe in heaven nor hell but you know there is a heaven there is a hell yeah. and she found out within seconds yeah. of what hell was really like that it wasn't just a story it wasn't just a, a name of a place but it was eternal and it was a place yeah. of flames well, that's point six. Point six was that the sinner is going to discover 60 seconds after he's died that hell is real. Oh, probably won't even be that long, will it? Yeah, no. And then the seventh point is that he's going to just he's going to understand that he is locked in with no way out. That is so tragic. Then I want to I want to tell a little story about what I saw on TBN one time. They had a uh, telecast on TVN about people that have died and gone on. And this finally they came to this one that really stood out to me. And that is they had some that knew the Lord. And for them, there was singing and angels. Oh, and yes. All that. Your brother had that. Mm-hmm. Your brother had brother angel, Jake. heard the he angels sing. angels singing yeah. just before he died. Yeah. And then, but this one, uh, this guy was they as he was they bring him out of it they could they could put the paddles on him and, and bring him back and as they pulled him out uh wherever he was he was screaming and he said you gotta help me he says i he says I, i'm a i'm a flame he says i'm burning up he said and, and the doctor was a jewish doctor tried to get, brought him back two or three times but each time he screamed the loudest mm-hmm. He, he screamed louder every time he brought him out and brought him back to life again. And finally, the when he pulled him, the doctor, the doctor was a Jewish man. And when he pulled him out, he says, Doc, he says, you've got to help me. You've got to do something. And this Jewish doctor someplace, somehow, happened to have heard someone in a situation where he knew a little sim- simple sinner's prayer god be merciful to me for i'm a sinner and the next time he went out he came back all peaceable wow he prayed that prayer he prayed the prayer wow and the doctor said the jewish doctor said that day two people got saved the person that i prayed with that led him to the lord and he says myself Oh, what Christ. a thrilling testament. Another great testament. And that's what it's all about. <laughs> we need to look at eternity in that way. Yeah. We think about your neighbors next door. Think about the people you work with, your family members. You know, uh, life is short. It's fragile. I mean, it's so fragile. Nobody, when they get up in the morning and we watch the news, you know, the 530 News of Tennessee here in Nashville. And I mean, every day there are horrific accidents, drive-by shootings drug overdose. And those yeah. people, I don't think when they got up that morning, ever thought, you know what, today's my last day. I should be careful. Maybe I should pray today. Maybe I should try to make my life better or make it right. 
they have no idea what it what will be in that or the time the time dial the sand dial of our yeah. life is draining out quickly and we have no idea yeah. what it's going to be you know we talked about here the last while was it what did you say 140 days of heat <clears throat> uh no uh, we had we had 40 days of of uh, straight straight 90, 90 to it was 100 degree heat yeah. index and more up to like 113. And when we go into the next slide, I want to re-emphasize what I started with. It's going to be extreme. Extreme. Extreme weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, or it's going to be extreme pleasures forevermore. And Jesus promised us in John 14, he says, I'm going to go to prepare a place for you. And if this is, when I go, I'm going to come again and re and, and bring you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Mm -hmm. And so this is what the There's whole There's only one way though. There's no, only, one, only way. one way. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father, but by me. So there's only one way in, and there's only gonna be, that will be the only way forever. The good news today is if anybody is listening, and I hope you share this message with somebody else, is that if you're breathing right now, you, you have, have an opportunity. opportunity. If you get a pulse. If you have a pulse, <laughs> you have an opportunity to just say, it's just as quickly as that, Jesus saved me. I've sinned. Come into my heart. And there's a gift. There's a gift that God gives. And I'm, I want to just tell you what I felt. When I felt that knock at my heart's door when I felt that pull at my heart's door. There's a thing what we call conviction. In other words, where you know you you've done bad. You know that you wouldn't make heaven. And there's conviction and God gives you that invitation and opens this if you will change your mind, change your uh, desire and open your heart to me and I'll come into your heart and I'll be with you. And he says, I'll be with you forever and ever and ever. He promised he'd never leave us. Yes, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. Oh, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. And I believe these are end days. I believe these are days that are going to be trying. I believe that we're going to be tested. We're going to have to know what we believe. We're going to have to stand up for what we believe. And uh, to say it's going to be easy, I don't think so. Just listen to the news if you're there. Yeah. You know, sometimes I just have to turn it off. I just tell her, I, I can't handle it. It's just, just, I want the good news to know that when we come through this, that we are in, in heaven forever and ever. But until then, we're going to have to be firm. We're going to have to stand firm on God's word. You know, uh, thinking about how the Lord took us with the program today, uh, I think it's possible for people to take this program and send it to a friend. Yes, it is. Well, they do. And Marty will tell them about that. Yeah, yeah. because... This is a message that every one of your friends and neighbors need to know. If you've got unsaved loved ones that need to come into relationship with Jesus, they need to tune in this very coffee and connect today. Yeah, you should tell them to say, you know what? We have personal friends who have has this coffee connect every week on Wednesday. They're personal friends. You know, and a lot of you, we've been in your homes. We've had coffee with you. We've had meals with you. We've talked to you on the phone. We've had letters, emails, text messages, and said, hey, you know, these are our friends. Could I just have you listen to this? This is this is their heartbeat. They have a heartbeat for people. They love people. Yeah, in the last few months, we had friends of ours, good friend of mine, Larry Phil. He's gone home to be with the Lord. He ended up with uh, with cancer and all that. And there's a lot of friends of ours that have gone, and they're now in heaven. And I hope they're tuned in on this program today, watching what's going down, because they've got their friends that they want to see come to Christ as well. Yes. Let's give them an opportunity to pray. Yes. Can I lead you in that prayer? Yes. My prayer won't save you, but if you mean what I pray, it will. It'll change your life. You'll pass from spiritual death unto spiritual life. That is life forevermore. Not, a, not an 80 or 100 year life. It's forever life. And Lord, right now, Come into my heart. Come right? into my heart. Lord, I love you. I love you. And I want to serve you. And I want to serve you. I don't want to spend my life eternity. I don't want to spend my eternity. In the pits of hell. In the pits of hell. But I want to call on Christ. But I want to call on Christ. It was your blood. It was your blood. That removed my sin. That removed my sin. 
that my sins will never be remembered again. That my sins will never be remembered again. Because they've been washed by the blood of Jesus. They've been washed in the blood of Jesus. The very Lamb of God. The very Lamb of God. I receive you as my personal Savior. I receive you as my personal Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, God is good. You know, heaven is real, and so is hell. But you want to choose check the number one box yeah hi marty hello <laughs> welcome back thank you you know larry as i was listening i was just once again uh love hearing um the gospel message and that these things that a, a sinner will know uh at the same time, there is such a gift available to each one before that moment. And so thank you so much for sharing, um, you know, sharing these, these truths, but also sharing the way to know Jesus and to have um, really the life of, of peace and joy, even before we face eternity, because that's even one of the gifts that we get in this life is that our pain and shame and guilt uh, can be exchanged for peace and joy and acceptance through his forgiveness. And so this is just an amazing um, video to be able to share with uh, those that need to know Christ. They need these uh, lies that they've heard that hell isn't real or uh, that I'm a good person or I go to church. Uh, they need those squashed so that they can be open to the truth. And so thank you for sharing that today. We will have this uploaded by the end of today to www.larrylundstromministries.org. Just click on the big Coffee and Connect banner on the front page. It will take you to our CC Live page where all of the uh, videos are. And uh, this will be the first one listed as it is in the as it is the most recent, click in the top right hand corner on the three dots and that will open up a link so that you can share it with those people that you absolutely know uh, would benefit from hearing uh, the truths that were presented today. Yes. And uh, look at our videos, look back uh, two weeks ago, uh, Jeff Nordine had the patriotic concert and we had a lot of a lot of reviews for that. And if you want to know somebody, if they want to listen to somebody, a great pianist who is a uh, worship leader and great music, last week we shared on forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Can't even tell you how important it is. You cannot live unless you forgive. And it will set you free. I share my testimony. I was so bound. I was so locked up. And, and Satan had tried to destroy my life and my health, my ministry. And God set me free through forgiveness. And uh, so I'm going to share this one with somebody else from today and and we just pray that you will have that burden and that desire to share Christ with somebody look at them through the eyes of eternity mm -hmm. look at them as if they have 10 minutes to live what would you do to reach them so we want to thank you for tuning in we're anxious we'll see you again next week God bless you take good care of yourself and just love the Lord more than you've ever loved him Amen. have a great week bye bye Bye. About 50 years ago in South Dakota, the Lundstroms knelt in prayer to God one night. There the Savior sent us with the message that we should sing about eternal life. We've been rolling down that long, lonesome highway, traveling to help our fellow man, and we'll keep traveling on. Song until we hear God's call to glory land. We've met a lot of friends in all our travels. We're so blessed. We know their prayers have helped us stay alive. And we're so thankful. So if you ever feel impressed to mention my name, then you know it's my turn to cry. We've been rolling down that long, lonesome traveling to help our fellow man and we'll keep traveling on singing happy song until we hear god's call to glory land and we'll keep traveling on singing happy song until we hear god's call to glory